Hauntings, cryptids, the unknown. Welcome to Mystic Moon Cafe Radio. Three, two, you're on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mystic Moon Cafe. Glad you joined us on this lovely Wednesday night here in Seattle, and hopefully it's lovely where everyone else is too, and you're staying safe and healthy and all sequestered in your little homes. Um, I just, you know, with everything crazy that's going on, I hope you're going to enjoy a little escape tonight, so... Um, how is Wendy and how is Jake tonight? Doing fine here. Went and took care of a bunch of business today and golly, it got really, really warm. And then the air conditioner kicked on in, in my basement room. It got to be about 60 degrees. So, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's and okay though. I like it cold. You said 85 out, uh, in Kansas city. Mm -hmm. And here I am bundled up in a blanket <laughs> because it's very chilly here <laughs> very cold but uh, how has everything else been going going that's good yeah it's going it's it's kind of boring but it's okay too reading a lot of books well that's good <laughs> i'll have another series for you shortly <laughs> oh no yes every time wendy introduces a series of books for me i'm like ah okay, i'll try it and next thing you know i am listening i i usually listen to my books because um you know i like to do other things while i listen and uh yeah this the alistair stone chronicles um with r r l king RL, mm -hmm. yes, I make sure it's RL King, mm -hmm. um, have been a little obsession 
of mine lately. I think I'm up to book 18 now. <laughs> <laughs> Only and what, so, four more to go? You'll, you'll yes. be okay. <laughs> so it's just like, oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, anytime Wendy suggests something, I usually like it. And then I'm off to the races reading and reading or listening. <laughs> when I say reading, I say that in air quotes. <laughs> because, She's you know. absorbing. Yes, I yes. am absorbing <laughs> the book. You know, honestly, though, it took me a long time to get used to listening to audiobooks. Mm. Um, because my mind would wander so much. Mm -hmm. And I really had to, like, train my brain to <laughs> listen to it. So, yeah, it was really something. Take some well, discipline. Mr. Jake, what about you? How's everything been going? Well, you know, my day job, if you guys, I mean, you've heard me talk about it. So I'm an analyst for a big tech company and I focus on health and wellness. So I've been doing a lot of very rigorous, boring, statistical and predictive analysis of how people will search for, you know, health things during this COVID-19 thing. And I mean, to me, you know, st I know some people are still blowing it off, but now I know four people have died from it. All oh, acquaintances. Shoot. This is yeah, a serious. This so is it's serious. very, it's yeah. very real for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, you, we were chatting earlier. I got to talk about regressing some data chains. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. my day. Wow. Sounds fun. Stuff. Yeah. Wee. Yeah. Yeah, me working at one of the largest hospitals in Washington, um, you know, I, it really irritated me that so many people had said that, oh, this is just fake. You know, it's not really something else. Like, uh, I hate to say this, but, uh, you know, our hospital has quite a few patients with it. And, um, you know, it's really mm -hmm. nothing but not fake news, please believe me. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was fake, fake, but since I didn't know anybody who, you know, had it and and even even recovered or, <sighs> or passed away, mm -hmm. and I didn't know anybody that knew anybody, I started going, I would feel better about it if I did know, I, I wouldn't feel better, but yeah. you know what I'm saying, I, mm -hmm. I, I would be more yeah, yeah. <clears throat> confident in what was being reported. Well, I, I think a big thing of it, too, it's um, that the media has, you know, really blown it out of proportion and, mm -hmm. and set a lot of fear in progress. And so, yeah. of course, since the fear was in progress, then all of a sudden that's when we have the panic <clears throat> and all the toilet paper being gone mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, people are terrified. Well, let's, <laughs> let's just be real. We could have a heavy rainstorm and the toilet paper would be sold out. <laughs> that is true. So. Anytime there is any kind kind of big <laughs> thing coming on and people think they're going to be you know stuck at home for you know well usually it's just you think you're going to be stuck at home for days like a big mm -hmm. snowstorm coming anything like that yeah same thing happened all the toilet paper disappeared yep. <laughs> so yeah <My. laughs> so yeah but this time you know people are actually stuck at home for months <laughs> yeah but this one's kind still, of like the no nobody joke. Nobody is going to. <laughs> nobody is going to be going through 250 rolls of toilet paper, you know, in just a few months, unless you have a really big family and using a lot. I got four or dogs. You, or you three dogs. Oh yeah, I got three that's, dogs. That's so, the, uh, you know, I got slobber. Still, I got 250 rolls. No, no. Or 650 <laughs> rolls. No. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. We'll you give the benefit of the doubt. But uh, mm -hmm. so let's just but, lighten the mood up, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all we're going to talk about this. We're we want you to come here and actually kind of get away from, from all the troubles. So, yes. so, you know, we really invite you. Stay to calm. Use a little common sense. Yeah. Wash, wash your damn hands. hands. Wash your damn hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put on those god awful masks. Yes. Uh, into the yes. elbow. Please uh. do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, though, somebody coughed in the store without covering their mouth what? anything when I had to go in there. And I swear, I almost started picking up some cheese and just pelting the guy. Oh, I was going to say, did you stole the bitch? No, well, I, well, the first <laughs> time that happened, <laughs> a couple of few weeks ago, the first time that happened, I actually yelled at somebody um, yeah, and, and yelled at them. Covered their mouth. But this time I was so horrified. I was like, couldn't believe it that I just, you know, backtracked and went the other way. And mm -hmm. 
I'm not walking through his germs. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Then I thought, how many other people are coughing and then leaving the aisles? And then I started. I thinking. know. <laughs> But like I said, we won't talk about this anymore. No, no more. <laughs> Please. No more so. burning, cough, coughing and sneezers at the stake. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Especially with allergy season. Like, a, like exactly. you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm throwing some false positives right now. Throwing some po false positives? That you. <laughs> what can you do? You can't. You just can't do. I know. Uh, okay. <laughs> well. I think we should move on. And why don't I read about uh, our next guest? Would you? That I would just be have lovely. such a lovely voice. I just might. Maybe I'll even talk like this for everybody. You're one We're not a 900 number. <laughs> oh, man. I can never use my 1 900 number anymore. I'll use it. We're all right. <laughs> well, you, you can if we're going to do a 1 900 number. <laughs> do, you do they even have 1 900 numbers anymore? I don't know. Let's find out. Go, but talk about <laughs> like, uh, Mama Wendy needs, you know, a new pair of shoes and a car. So That's go ahead, right. Jim. <laughs> we can do <hear> this dominatrix. <laughs> hey, baby, hubba hubba. <laughs> hubba hubba. The lines are still anybody... open. I'll drop some numbers in the chat. <laughs> I don't think anybody has used hubba hubba since the 1920s. <laughs> well, not... <laughs> True. Uh... So I'll drop this for Phone Losers of America so you can get the 900 sex lines and psychics. But well, let's that's just move nice. on to some dead things, eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, tonight we have a very special guest. We are going to have conversations with Haunted Crew of Canada's Mike. Now, is it Morin or Morin? Morin. Okay. Just Morin. want to make sure so I don't start calling you Maureen. <laughs> Or well, the French call me Morin. 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 That's kind of nice, actually. Um, so, call me Moran. No, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm you sure he hasn't heard that, heard that before. Heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, well, let me read a little bit about, uh, about Mike. He is a paranormal investigator from Vancouver, BC. So we have the Canadian side with us tonight. And I won't start singing, oh, Canada. Um, <laughs> sorry, I did. Okay, I'm going to say this in his words, since this is written in his person. So, um, well, no, never mind. I can, I can switch it around. I think my brain works that way. So he has over 15 years of experience investigating multiple types of haunted locations. So he and I probably started about the same time. Um, his main experience is in ghost hunting, but he enjoys studying and investigating Sasquatch and the occult as well. So um, we'll talk more about Sasquatch later. Um, his current day job is fighting the war on animal cruelty, homelessness, and drug addiction. So major hero there too, saying that in all honesty. Um, he co-hosts a segment on Dave Scott's Spaced Out Radio called Ghosts of the Great White North once a month, which is an awesome show. Um, he's been involved with multiple fundraisers for haunted locations to promote history and to help keep historical places afloat, which is another amazing thing. Um, he organizes fundraisers at historical locations to raise money to keep historical areas alive. And his team is called the Haunted Crew of Canada, and they investigate all things paranormal throughout Western Canada, as well as multiple locations in the United States. So, welcome, Mike. It's great to have you here. Happy to be here. Yeah, welcome. Yay. Welcome. So. I think you're like the pre-show. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about toilet paper. No. <laughs> like the haunted toilet paper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, why don't you um, just kind of, you know, we reread your bio, but why don't you tell us a little more about yourself or, you know, anything and maybe how you first kind of got interested in the paranormal, what happened when you were a child, your deepest, darkest feelings. <laughs> Just it all started kidding. back. No, um, I became interested in the paranormal at a young age. I always saw weird things, heard weird things. The first real experience. Oh, you guys can see my air quotes. You yeah. Yes, we can. 
fun. <laughs> if you're but, um, watching the YouTube video, you will see his air quotes. <laughs> oh, that'll be, that'll be my thing. But um, <laughs> yeah, my first real experience to me, I was probably six or seven years old. I was home from school. I was sick. I was laying on my couch and um, I heard a noise downstairs. Parents were at work, so it was just me. And um, I was like, oh, whatever, just a house settling, you know, like they say in the movies. And um, all of a sudden I kind of smelt something weird. I'm like, whatever. I'm getting a little creeped out because I'm young. Because in those days, aging myself, our parents left us home when we were sick. Mm -hmm. And um, all of a sudden I saw this short, stout, bearded guy, big beard, coming up my stairs and he's holding like a lead pipe. And I'm like, oh, can't use that word on here. <laughs> and uh, I panic and I look up oh. again. He'd walk down the hallway towards my parents' room at the time. This is a two-story house. And then while he's walking down the hallway, vanishes. And I'm wow. like, what? And then um, thankfully my neighbor, he was an RCMP officer. So I have my little Rolodex thing because we had those back in the 80s. And um, I call my neighbor and I'm like, this just happened. And he was at work, but his wife was home. And he always left a little can of pepper spray and a baton with his wife when he went to work. And so she comes, this little old lady comes over with a blow baton and a pepper spray can. And oh there's my house like the police. And um, there was nothing. So from then, that's when my, my brain started thinking there must be more. And um, I saw this guy multiple times and I became accustomed to it and it didn't creep me out. But when it stopped creeping me out is when it stopped. Like I stopped seeing the guy. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I can't explain that. I um, Before I moved out of that house, this was probably eight years ago. I did do an investigation. I used all my gear, but got nothing. No evidence from there. Um, to this day, that's one of the first stories I talk about because that, that kind of ruined, well, it didn't ruin, it kind of, flipped a switch in my head to want to explore what's going on. And a couple of years later, once this is all old news, I go to my cousin's house in Manitoba because my parents used to ship me out there in the summertime. Picture like an old Adams Family style historic house um, in like a old part of the city. That, that's where my cousin lived. And he lived in kind of a seedy area where there's lots of bad people around, homeless people and all that. And um, I was probably, we're going to fast forward to about 12 years old. And I'm like, Marty, aren't you going to lock the door? He's like, no, my friends look after the house. I'm like, but there's nobody there. I'm like, okay. And then we go to the store, we come back. Anyhow, that night when I'm going to bed, everyone else is asleep. I was kind of on the main floor. It's three stories. Like, kind of looked like the, um, the Haunting in Connecticut style house, if you've seen that movie. Mm -hmm. And then the basement was really creepy, kind of like in but without like the mortuary. Um, all of a sudden I hear giant steel toe steps coming up the stairs. The door slams open and I hear this guy stomping all over the kitchen and goes back downstairs and the door slams. And then it happened all night. Wow. Yeah, Boy. so the, like for, from that, that is when I started watching scary movies. Like the movie that broke me in was Fright Night and Monster Club. Those are my two <laughs> first ones that I can remember. Fright Night scarred me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> but I watched it like not too long ago. I'm like, why did this scare me? But um, yeah, so that's what all started for me. Wow. So, um, I mean, when did you like, like start, um, I guess you'd say, getting interested in doing it full time? Hmm. That probably 15, 16 years ago. Um, I mean, what made you like want to join a group and all that stuff too? I'm an investigator by day. So it's just hardwired into my head to be like that. Oh, wow. You're going to see all my hand gestures. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's hardwired. okay. Hardwired. <laughs> but, um, but I just wanted more. And I like, I like the original, I'll say it. I like the original Ghost Adventures, like seasons ones and twos when they first came on TV. I like the old Paranormal State. I like the old, the original, original, original Ghost Hunters. Yeah, the, the beginning Ghost Hunters. The, the first three Hunters. years of Ghost Hunters, yeah. I think. That's when, yeah. you know, they actually had places that they could debunk that weren't haunted. Then yeah. after that, it was like everything was haunted. It was all proper. There weren't demons in every corner of houses, yeah. right? And um, 
it was really dry, but it was more realistic, I guess. Um, and that's what got me. And then when I got my job, when I was working at the SPCA, when I first started, which we'll get into a nice ghost story, um, a couple of the people I worked with, I heard them talking about ghosts and this place is haunted. I'm like, well, I'm into ghosts. And then we all started. Then we started a group at Dissolve. We were called the British Columbia Paranormal Research Society. And that was my first team. And we did a lot of residentials with that team. So that would have been about, where are we? 2020? Yeah, 2005, 15-ish years. That's when I started too. Yeah. 2005. It was pretty cool. It's like, hey, we're both like, you know, that in common. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I still have my original audio recorder that I used way back when. Do you? I, I think I lost mine. Mine was a little Sony. Yeah. A nice little Sony recorder. What was your first one, Jake? Sony recorder. <laughs> the $30 one that's like, yay big, like a pack of gum almost. Yep. Yeah. I think that was everyone's <laughs> yes. first recorder. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, just loved it. But uh, so, um, I mean, we can get into how, how did you first meet uh, Ross Allison and, and how did, because uh, I was going to say when I first met Mike, I, or did, was it the first time I met, met you? Did I meet you when you came to Seattle? No, you met me up in Barkerville. Okay. I was trying to think if I met you in Seattle first, but, uh, but uh, how did you come about meeting Ross Allison and, um, you know, how did that come about with Barkerville? Um, I met Ross. Well, I, we we interviewed him a few times on Dave's show. Right. So I knew him through social media and the radio. Um, Dave Scott did a paracon up in Hundred Mile House, nor, Northern BC, and him and David Weatherly came up there, and I met them there, and it was really neat. Um, it, it was it was it was awesome the, the way it turned about. So there was a. Uh, uh, what, what would they do? So one of the nights was um, not stargazing, but looking for UFOs. As I look up, um, yeah. <laughs> See any up there? <laughs> but um, me and my uh, my friend Jeff and his brother weren't. Jeff's on my team. You met Jeff. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome too. We're not, we're not UFO guys. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a UFO guy. I'm a lot of other guys with the paranormal field. Yeah, we're not. not. <laughs> Um, I want to believe though yeah me too (laughs) put the evidence on my feet now I'll take a look (laughs) but um that may open up a can of worms to listeners but I um what was I going on sidetracked my story yes so then Jeff and I were like yeah UFOs and then I know Ross is a he's a game board guy Mm -hmm. and then I remember Ross saying hey you want to play games tonight I'm like do that but i'm like let me go pull a string and i go talk to to dave scott at the time i'm like i've got ross and dave they want to go do an actual investigation off the books can i have the keys to the 108 mile ranch and then dave is like well the 108 mile ranch don't mean to explain an hour later just so i have the picture for you um it's an old roadhouse going up to Barkerville. um dave gave me the keys and I took, we took Ross and Dave and we did our own private investigation. We hit it off really good, I thought. I think they thought too. Um, very similar thinking. And that's when I met him and got along. And then here we are. I came down to Seattle, saw him. And then uh, we were talking a lot, a lot about investigations and whatnot. And I invited you guys up to Barkerville and here we are today. That was pretty awesome, but I mm-hmm. thought that might be a good uh, segue into Barkerville. Um, why don't you tell us? A l- why don't you tell everybody a little about about Barkerville and when you started to investigate it and everything? Sure. Um, once this COVID thing's over, I'm thinking August. Yes. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yes. Um, so Barkerville, late 1800s gold rush town. Um, all the Americans came up thinking this was going to be the big deal. And it was the big deal. It paid off for years on gold. Um, I've been investigating that Americans take a town like Deadwood or Tombstone and plop it in the middle of a mountain and bushes along a gold-rich stream. That is that is your Barkerville. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I've been investigating it since 2015. I'm good friends with James, the, the guy who runs it, as well as a couple of the other shopkeepers. Coincidentally, I work with some of the shop we, shopkeeps in the animal world. But um, yeah, since 2015, I've probably investigated there seven or eight times now. Wow. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Um, I can say that uh, <clears throat> they it, Mike invited us up to Barkerville and... Uh, it's a ghost town, basically, um, especially in the winter time, because nobody lives there or is, uh, you know, because you know the snow. I think probably gets pretty, pretty. Uh, Minus thirty, thirty-five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But uh, it was an awesome place, and I can say a ghost was the first American team to investigate the place, and uh, mm -hmm. it's it's an amazing establishment. Um, how many? original buildings would you say uh just under half of them there was yeah. uh what happened was during the gold rush there was uh the saloon caught on fire the saloon slash hotel caught on fire and it burnt basically the entire town down in under 12 hours, i think in under a day say just a couple hours and it sucks because you see a lot of the pre-fire photos that was a really cool looking old deadwood style town wow um, they, yeah, I think it's about three or three to five original buildings. The Tong buildings, all the Chinese buildings, a lot of those ones are original. That's and cool. a very, very um, large Chinese population. Um, wasn't it about uh, almost over half the population? Yeah, towards the end there. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say, it was just so it was pretty awesome. Um, we got to investigate the was it an old, the old opium den there the, the, the tong building yeah so we we got access to two buildings from there the chiku tong so the tong back in the day were a lot like our freemasons just chinese version oh, okay That's so we did amazing. do that so we were able we were granted access to there and we were also granted access to the opium part for all like the chinese miners and whatnot that was pretty amazing. It was, it, I can tell you guys, it was a little scary um, being in there because, um, not scary paranormal wise, but scary because they had everything like set up in there and it was little tight quarters and little dishes and things like that. And I just knew I was going to like swing around <laughs> and knock <laughs> everything off the table with my case. Mm -hmm. So I was like really being careful and, and everything, but it was such an amazing place because I don't even think that they had opened that up for like, I mean, I don't know how many years. So no, they, um, the only time those buildings are opened is usually when we go up there. Some of them, like some of them are open at daytimes, but you know, some of, a couple of the buildings have like the museum style double doors in them, right? Yeah. Uh, well, that's, oh, go oh, ahead. Oh, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and that's where um, we got in the old, um, the with the opium den area. That's where I got that EVP. Um, an EVP? Yes, an EVP. But <laughs> <laughs> now for our listening audience, what is an EVP, Jim? An EVP is eggs versus, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Eggs versus potatoes. Yes, Damn eggs it. versus potatoes. I'll just have the hash. <laughs> An EVP is an electronic voice phenomenon, and that is when you don't hear that with your own ears. You only hear it when you're playing back the recorder. Now, if you hear something with your own ears, that is called a DVP, which basically is a direct voice phenomenon. So just saying, you know, with that. But an EVP um is what so we got but dude, this one's really weird because it sounds like i don't know what language wow. it is mm -hmm. uh, but it's really well, loud we could listen to it right now would you wow well, that's such a coincidence i know just give me a moment to load up our audio it's <laughs> magic <great>. jake <laughs> yeah. magic jake <laughs> Throw an old you want car open salesman open. audio or radio voice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, I'm opening it up, guys. Just a sec. It is loaded. Are you ready? I'm going to turn this up. Um, so EVPs are generally a little uh, soft sounding. So you might have to turn up your speakers for this one. But um, I'll this play one it. you won't need to turn up okay. your speakers. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really bizarre. Okay, we did not hear this. Okay, so I am playing it right now. 
Let me play it one more time for folks. Kind of sounds like a guy's juggling, eh? Yeah, I have no idea what uh, language that was or anything. Mike, I know you didn't get to hear that right now, so I'll have to send that to you so you can hear it. Sure, I was going like this. We're getting it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll drop it in our <clears throat> internal chat for him, okay? But that's, yeah, what's so weird is we did not hear it at the time, and um, which just doesn't make any sense to me because it's pretty loud. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to figure that one out. But okay. uh, So I dropped it in the chat for you, Mike, if you want to check it out. Excellent. But that was an amazing um, experience there. And um, yeah, I really want to go back. It's just a really cool, really cool, beautiful space. And when, when did we go the last time? Was it in May? April. Or April. Yeah, I thought so. It was like that. But yeah, there's still you know, a lot of snow out there. If you can see from uh, Mike's picture behind him, for those of you that uh, are looking at the YouTube. That was from when you guys were there. Yep. Way. That was it, because I've got several that look like that, too, because I was like, hey, you took my picture, but no, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I have a good ghost story. I have a good ghost story about that oh, talk building we were just talking Ooh. about. Okay. So 2015, the first time I ever investigated that building was with a previous team, and um, there was three of us, no, four of us, and um, two guys that are waiting outside, because like June said, it's really close quarter building. Just picture like an old minor shack with multiple um bunk beds tables all that sort of stuff um we go in and i'm filming our investigator at this time and um he a bit aggressive style and he goes are any of you people in here what modern day people be like you can't say that anymore um but he didn't mean it like that he just meant trying to get a trying to get a little bit of a rise out of the ghost in there potential ghosts in there and um he just goes oh man i just walked through a cobweb and in my mind i'm like here we go uh -huh. <laughs> and um all of a sudden he freaks out he's like profanities i can't say on your show and he runs by me like a bull in a china shop and when he's running out one of the photo frames on the um the wall kind of fires at him like it oh. like, goes like that to it um oh. So he offended someone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so he leaves me now. I'm like, oh, God. And um, when we all go outside, I saw the camera rolling. I said, like, hold the camera. Um, he flips his shirt up, and he has scratches on his back. Oh, wow. Like two oh, sets of three like that on mm. each side. And it was burning. And when I had the, I have, I have the camera, but like, I still have the video. And you can see, you know, when you fresh scratch yourself, or like when a dog nail scratches your hand, you see the the scratch rise. Mm -hmm. That's what it was doing. And that was my intro to Barkerville. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did that freak you out any? Or? Um, I learned not to run previously before going on that. So no running. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I think the first historical um, thing, house I did, was called O'Keefe's Ranch, which is in a town called called Vernon. And O'Keefe's Ranch, they um, it's a giant, looks almost like a plantation house. And um, they would purchase cattle from California. So you picture cattlemen driving all these bulls and all that from California to British Columbia, um, just via horseback. Anyhow, um, that place was from the 1800s, and this was the first time I did a historic house. And um, the guys I was with locked me in the building by myself. And they're like, no more running. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sometimes I would run away <laughs> if it was scary. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, I, I, I did kind of, I had a little rant about that today on my, on the um, Facebook <laughs> a ghost page because I was, uh, I've been watching YouTube videos of different groups um, investigating because I need my fix really bad. <laughs> and um, there was this one group that was investigating and as soon as things started happening, they started getting scared, they decided to quit. Oh boy. Excuse me, I'm going to have to cough. <laughs> it's the demons in her lungs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's the allergies. Um, 
let's hear another ghost story. <laughs> another ghost story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have those. So four of the clips I sent you, Jake, are yep. probably. Okay. If you want to play some EVPs. Yeah, sure. Which, sure. Um, which specific? Vicious growl. Okay, we can do that one. Dead. Okay. I got to load them one at a time. They only play one at a time here. So yeah, that's true. Um, vicious. I'll tell you that secret after the show. Oh, is it a playlist that I didn't make? Mm -hmm. Oopsie. Uh, vicious growl is 702. Here we go. 702139. Got it. Okay, I'll play this one. It's short. I'll play it three times back to back so folks can listen. Okay. Playing now. Okay, one more time. You'll hear it. It's an eight second clip. You hear it about at the at the five second mark. And one last time, because, you know, we're just like Ghost Adventures that replays everything. <laughs> Instant replay. Okay, Mike, what's the story behind that one? So the vicious growl was from when I was investigating with the same group. Um, I believe this one was actually in the Tom building. Um, not the night when the, uh, when my friend got scratched. It was a, we investigated three nights when we were up there that time. It was um, just doing a, a random EVP session. It's kind of, as, as normal here. investigators, you guys are no, like, in the cemetery. you're in this building wow. and you're just asking questions. And then when you go back to your audio, when you listen to files like that and you're like, oh boy, that guy could have been sitting right beside me. It's kind of unsettling. Um, this is, I guess, what makes us do it is when you, when you obtain clips like that. Um, there's another one in there from right outside the cemetery, just doing uh, an EV, a random EVP session in the cemetery. Because so Barkerville has a pioneer cemetery too. So there's people that are buried from 1800s beyond, right? Mm -hmm. So when we were in the old section of the cemetery, so the pioneer part, this... Um, clip it's titled class a evp okay you'll hear a guy say died here yep okay one sec oh my and i will play this one three times as well so here's the first one listening close folks uh, well you, this one's pretty clear <laughs> <laughs> he died here in the and one last time for you. So it says no at the end. That's a pretty died good one. Here and then is in the yeah, the, the died here is not oh. the EVP, the no at the end. Mm -hmm. And then another another creepy one. This is just from doing random... Well, all criminal investigations are random. But just... Uh, this one, I believe, was in the theater. So there's a theater at the... Uh, okay. One sec while I go grab that one. Uh, you actually, it looks like you have a couple. There's stage left, and then there's the oh, leave one. That's a different location. Okay. Um, the one that's 7020140, dead, is from Barkerville. Okay, one sec. I see it. One sec. And I'll play this one twice it's a 10 second clip do you want to talk to him again okay that comes in the final do two seconds one more time okay Okay, guys. We're on? Yeah. Oh. 
Okay, I, okay. Play, I played them twice. I played them okay, twice. We're good. We're good. Okay. And the last one is called Taking Sides. Okay. One sec while I get that one loaded up. If June can hear this one, this one was from when she was up there. Oh, okay. Cool. And this one's a 15 second clip. So I will. We're here to finalize what happened last time. Fix things. Make things peaceful. And I'll play it one more time. It comes at about the 10 second mark in this 15 second clip. We're here to finalize what happened last time. Fix things, make things peaceful. Okay, back to you guys. And that one was from the Tong building where June got her clip, same, build, same building as that. That is so uh, cool. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. I, I really can't wait to go back there. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. And it's only a, a short little 10-hour drive from um, Seattle. So. <laughs> 10 hours from Seattle? <clears throat> I think it is. Yeah. Or was it eight? I think I'm going to cough again. Sorry. Allergy season. Okay, do you want to get another one do you have another barkerville um no those are all i those were the four clips i got from barkerville for you okay okay sorry i keep dying <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really bad when you haven't talked all day long and then just kind of working from home and then all of a sudden you start talking and then it's like <laughs> yeah we need to get you a pet yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish. So, it, it, per per uh, Bazooka Joe out there, what I think you hear in the background is I have a very large dog that snores, and he's right under my feet. <laughs> okay, because so I was looking at Dakota, and, <clears throat> and he was quiet when I took my my headphones off. So. Yeah, it's Mikey. Mikey <laughs> okay. is snoring. Yeah. Or or could it be Mr. Creepy? Is Mr. That Creepy could be, talking? It could be Mr. Ooh, which you can only Mr. see in the YouTube Creepy. video, but the haunted doll is cameoing behind you. Yes, me. he is behind me right now, and you never know. I'm hoping if uh, people do watch this and see his eyes or see him move a little bit to make sure you let us know <laughs> everything. But uh, <clears throat> so, um, well, before we get to the other investigations, how did you get involved with? Um, with Dave Scott and <coughs> everything there. See if I can if I can get through this without falling over and dying. Yeah, that would Dave. be nice. <laughs> Dave Scott, <laughs> um, he hosts uh, he hosts Spaced Out Radio, and I met Dave I think in 2014 2015 through other guys in the paranormal field. Um, he was just launching his show then. He moved from the Lower Mainland of British Columbia way up to 108 Mile, which is to Barkerville, and um, he had a lot of Bigfoot and alien encounters. Mm. So the team that I was with, we talked to him about that and interviewed him about that. And when he started his show, um, he had us on, and I kept going on once a month. And right now, he's a personal, really good friend of mine. So I go over and visit awesome. him all the time. <clears throat> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That is yes, it is really cool. Yeah, but. Yeah, I absolutely love it um, out there. You know, I'm not much of a woodsy person or anything, but that was just absolutely beautiful scenery out there, everything. So, one of the really summers cool. I was up there, they um, made everyone go inside and away from the main drag because of there's a grizzly bear in the area, so they had to go scare them away. Yeah, when when I was walking by myself, about I don't know what time it was, maybe midnight maybe a little little after kind of down the street all by myself i started thinking about that going hmm <laughs> you know i bet there are probably bears out here <laughs> and then i thought you know Not i better stay a little bit closer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was kind of funny though just hit me i was like oh, you know <laughs> but uh, yeah that was pretty funny um so, um, well, why don't we, before we get into the, the other investigations and things, why don't we talk about uh, the Haunted Crew of Canada? Sure. Um, we've been alive as the Haunted Crew of Canada for coming on, oh boy, four or five years. 
ish. And um, we have focused on a lot of historic locations. Like we, we started doing the fundraisers up at 108 Mile Ranch, which Dave and his crew do. Um, we do a, there's another place called the Bailey House, which is another historic house to a town called Merritt. Basically, in a nutshell, that's the house that, that kind of founded that city and the people that live there. Um, at least once a year, we go and do a fundraiser night up there and we raise money to keep that place afloat. Um, we go to Victoria, so Vancouver Island. Juno might have caught your cough. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> and, um, it's contagious. <laughs> we went to Langham Court Theater in Victoria where we did an investigation. That, that theater's cool. It's one of the, there's only two theaters like it in Canada. It um, used to be a horse stable in the 1800s. Then it was a mortuary funeral home. Then it was turned into a theater. So you can imagine the stuff you'd get there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> then, That's a lot of intense energy. Oh, it, yeah. we got some good clips from there too. And nice. um, we got we got some audio for you from there too. Oh, awesome. And um, there's a, one of my favorite places we've investigated. I wish I could put a photo or find a photo of it. Um, the SS Sycamuse, which is in a town called Penticton. Um, it's one of Canada's last paddle wheels that are paddle wheel boats that are afloat. Oh, cool. And um, back in World War I, it used to um, carry troops from one end of Okanagan Lake to the other. Like, the ones going to war and the ones coming home from <clears throat> war, be it alive, injured, or dead, they would go home in that. Oh, wow. And that had a lot of history on it. That was one of the creepiest places I've ever investigated, but... Doing paranormal investigating, I like to give back. And I wouldn't consider myself a selfish investigator, which there are a lot of them out there. Oh, yeah. Um, I like helping. I like, because it's kind of like, here, we'll do this for you. And then they'll let you investigate it, which is kind of, which is fun. Like, we don't get mm -hmm. paid for it. We just go do it. And it's nice to see historic places in my country, my province, being able to stay afloat. Because you see a lot of them shut down or become ghost towns because... Yeah. The province doesn't fund them so if we can help that's what we do like in barker like um in august if everything works out we got one in barkerville coming up so it's the first second time i've done the fundraiser there that's really cool yeah <clears throat> nice. does so that bring a big crowd in last year yeah it would be perfect timing um they had like a bunch of corvette enthusiasts so all these Ooh. guys drove their corvettes all the way up there and then they they, um, part of their little night, they came out and did an investigation with us. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was fun. But that's what we do. Like, we're, um, we do a lot of residential houses, too. Um, but we really like the bigger locations. We like to do the fundraiser. We like to do the schmoozing with people and educate them on, on what we do. And we're hands-on. So when we do our, our um, fundraisers, we'll let them use some of our gear. <laughs> yes. And, like there's a lot of wear and tear on my gear now, but it's it worth it to me. So, yeah, we're a good team. We we get along well. We're from various other teams that have been around. So that's pretty cool. Yes, yeah. I have met the rest of your team. They're all amazing. Really fun. Yeah, yeah the rest of your team is really amazing. But you, no, no I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, everybody's pretty awesome. It's pretty I mean, great. I think my favorite part was when you guys dressed Sandra up as a hurdy gurdy girl. Oh yes, that was pretty fun. Um, we we a did an what? yes <laughs> yes talk, talk about talk about the, those lovely lovely ladies. So Sandra, she's she's German. Um, my lady friend, and um, she was up there that weekend and. A hurdy gurdy girl in Barkerville would have been a lady of the night entrepreneur. <laughs> so, so then we got the hurdy gurdy Ross. girl. Yeah. <clears throat> and Ross Working looks lady. at her because Ross knew she's German and goes, Hey, want to be a hurdy gurdy girl? Because he had, I forget what machine he had up there. It was really neat. And um, he had his whole machine set up and he wanted to try, he wanted to try an experiment with Sandra because she could speak German properly. And all of that stuff. And she put on the girdle. She put on the period piece. Prostitute her to go to dress. And she goes up to room two in the St. George Hotel. So the St. George Hotel in Barkerville says to have a lady of the night come and open the door, touch men, 
if you put money out onto the nightstand and all, that's where all the action of paranormal happens now. And um, so she goes and lays on the bed. Ross is doing his thing downstairs, has all the sensors going on. June was there with the recorders. And um, I think she said she had something touch her arm and kind of put her their hand on her thigh. Yeah, I remember like, that. Yeah. Then I got to play the madam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go in there and... And, uh, you know, just kind of pretend that uh, I was going to be changing things and some of the girls didn't really know how to do their job right and I was going to have to show them. <laughs> yeah, every time we do a bordello in, or brothel investigation, June pulls out the, okay, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's good. And then, but then I have to tell you this. I got a video. At the very end, I'm all by myself in the, in the house or the old hotel. Um, what was the name of the old hotel again? St. George Hotel. St. George, yes. I was thinking it was St. George. Um, I was all by myself because Morgan and Ross had left me there because they were going to get uh, the car to come down and pick up the equipment. And so I'm in there. And so I thought I better like kind of apologize for the way I was, you know, when I acted like the madam. So when I was in there, I was like, hey, everyone, I just wanted to tell you, I'm really sorry. <clears throat> I'm really not your madam, your new madam. You know, I was just, you know, um, we were just doing an experiment. We were just, you know, things. And so I'm explaining all this. And when I start explaining this, all of a sudden, one of the light fixtures starts swinging back and forth. Wow. And I got it on video almost because I grabbed my, my video <clears throat> thing and I, I got it. So, and the, I mean, the door was shut. You know, it was like that. And only one of the lanterns started swinging. The other one wasn't swinging. So yeah. I was like, it was either telling me it's okay or you better get your ass out of here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, really sorry. <laughs> Funny story about that, that hotel, though. Um, the first time I investigated up there, the lady who owned it at the time came up and opened it for us in March. And she let us stay there nice here i am i'm like i got room too based on like the experiences that have happened and um so then a guy a camera guy or other guy he's like well i'm gonna put a camera on you all night i'm like okay weird but okay and um so i put my money on the nightstand and i do everything what people's accounts have said to do and nothing all weekend Aww. yeah i thought i heard a little chick 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 on like the door one night but nothing. Hmm. Well, don't take it personally. I'm sure they liked you. <laughs> <laughs> or they but, were just like, nothing's going to happen for that pit pittance you put out on the, the tabletop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I don't work for loonies. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> May have been a loony or two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we had done one investigation in... Um, butte montana at the old dumas um, brothel um there which was a really cool amazing place and hopefully hopefully we'll get to go there when i think what do we have that uh, scheduled for i can't remember where we when we have that scheduled for Is i that think August it's supposed to be july but it, oh, yeah we'll see yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i, I kind of yeah i kind of <laughs> doubt it's gonna happen yeah, uh. but <laughs> we'll see um but um it was really interesting. Uh, we had one of the guys have to hold some money up and uh, he goes, how much can I get for this? What can I get for this? And we have a really good EVP of someone, uh, sounds like a woman saying, you know, I'd F, F him. <laughs> wow. say it, you know, like that. But yeah, it was really good. So brothels are, I, I, I do like investigating brothels. I do have to say that. <laughs> it was like we get a lot of really good uh, evidence in, in a lot of brothels. I like all the old um, menus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they made me read them. I never met these people before, and Ross makes me read the menu <laughs> of the not food menu. <laughs> right. <laughs> people are going, but the uh, uh, yes. a la carte. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
was good. I, I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> Ross is like, read it out loud, June. Read it out loud. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Where do I have to stick my finger? I don't know. <laughs> 25 cents. Oh boy, big money. Yeah, but, yeah, it was a little embarrassing. But yeah. <laughs> they were like, God, who did Ross bring with him? This perv. <laughs> yeah, that no, was good. So what what's your role in uh your in the group, basically? Um, I guess lead investigator. Um, we have me the lead, uh, Jeff, he lives in Edmonton. He does our audio. Um, what we all actively seek locations and whatnot. Um, Blair and Jay are investigators. Uh, yeah, we're all just a good team. That's Most awesome. Time. Yeah. And oh, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just about ready to cough again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, no. Um, we we keep it small. We both be all we've all been on teams, and we know how the dynamics can change and stuff like that. So, oh yes, yes. <laughs> so, what's your? I'll I'll let Jake um field this one. But I was going to say, what is your favorite uh, equipment to use? Oh, yeah, I'm an audio. We can talk guy. gadgets all day. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, what is my audio recorder? How boring is that? But that's my favorite ed- no. my favorite piece of evidence. Um, the H2N is what I use. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah, I've got an H1. Um, I quite like the zooms. I tried task cams for oh, a while. Yeah. I found them too finicky. I don't like the sound they make. Oh, uh, I find treble. I, they're, they have more higher frequency. Mm-hmm. The game sounds on them. others. Yeah. Me. But... Um, I used to play music for a long time too, so I'm really fussy when it comes to audio. And I find Zoom gives you the best ear there sound. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got a new piece of gear that I was excited to bring down to the Oregon Ghost Conference, but. Oh, yeah. that didn't happen. Yeah. No, I got the, um, uh, what's it even called? Ugh. I don't remember now. It's like a periscope thing. Uh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll come to me. Where you can look over walls and bushes and no, no. no. <laughs> um, is it like the checking. static electricity detector yeah. thing or one of their? Yeah. Oh, the dude, I had to like ship that shit right back, man. Talk about breaking upon like pressing power. It's funny you say that <laughs> because um, I pressed power. However, it does not look like it does in the ad. It's completely different. They're getting sued in the UK, by the way, for that. For real? Yeah, for real. I'll have to dig up that story, but yeah, it's because it's all the paranologies. I think is the name of the. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, and I got the one that's Y shaped with the little metal string in between yeah. the two. It detects oh the, and it does the blue and the red or something like that. It worked for like yep. thirty seconds and then it just went to hell. Yeah. Oh, it seems man. like it could be cool. Yeah, it it does. Bug. It does look good Fly. on TV, and then you get a bit of 3D printed. Yeah, and they could give me shit all they want. Like <laughs> that—that that is not a good gadget. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But um, I like to use a lot of old-fashioned gear as well. Like earlier when we were talking about the old, like what got me into into the investigations. Um, I remember the show A Haunting, but like the original one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We were talking about Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine Warren really got me into the, the field as well. Um, when I was little, I would go read books on them, like anything I could on them. Um, but I like to use an actual audio recorder with a tape. Um, I have a really nice one, that I, like a Martinez one that I use. Mm. I think it's very similar to the style that actually Ed and Lorraine Warren <laughs> used when they used tapes. Um, I like to use fishing line with um, a bell. I got a really good, if you go onto our YouTube page and you look up Honda Groove Canada and you look up the Bailey House teaser, at the end you'll see the uh, fishing line and a bell and the bell just goes boom like that. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just so got that video one. here. Just one second. <laughs> yeah, you can get it. But then um, 
no one knows the video, video folks it happened this is that's good so we Let's like if i can I, get I it to like... pull in <laughs> oh is that the thing i got the rca cassette recorder it. you're, it's, it's not showing you're up kind of fading oh, in oh there he is yeah, you're, you're... <laughs> it's still the background <laughs> is that a martinez one <laughs> It's not showing up. That was kind of like I'm a mutant phrasing yeah, in and exactly. out. Exactly, you're phasing in and out. <laughs> I don't know if they'll show up. There's the little Hit microphone the thing. Button. That's pretty awesome. There. Awesome. Yep. I got yep. that and I got the Polaroid. We're going to take this to the yep. old Idaho State prison to do an old school ghost hunt. Wicked. Yeah, we're, we're going to yeah use all the old school. Uh, I want to go to those places. With a, you know, with a, uh, a compass for, you know, your yep to get uh emf too. and everything and and uh yeah so we were gonna do yeah, the old school paranormal investigation well we'll yeah. find another place to do that yeah because be cool. <laughs> when you do stuff like that there's no contamination there's no electricity it's it's well there is with a tape player but like it's more raw than current gear um another piece of gear that i like using that actually one of our team members jeff made he custom made it was our sls Okay. So that's a fun one to use. Um, I consider it secondary evidence because it's not hard evidence like an EVP, in my opinion. It's fun to experiment with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We've used it a few times. So, um, you know, definitely secondary. I, the, com the big tech company I work for makes uh, the Connect. Oh, cool. So I got to talk to the product manager and he was just like, you're using it for what? <laughs> <laughs> i'm like dude so how's this work <laughs> i i like um i like i consider the secondary evidence too but i like spirit boxes um sandra she made a an actual portal like she oh. followed the schematics on, online and made a portal out of like an old late 1800s early 1900s um sewing case mm -hmm. so like there's a speaker in it there's a couple of the pedals it's really cool so we've been we take that out too it's got a got some cool hits on it through the spirit box yeah recently we've been testing the estes method quite a bit Have you a few seen what that different. is no i should drop a, a link but you know that's you see it on hellier and kindred spirits all the time with the headphones blindfold you got the spirit box oh yeah 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 yeah, and, you know, you can't hear the person who's asking the questions. You're just, you know, rattling off what you hear. Um, I found it was more about the person using the device than the actual stuff coming through the device. Like, certain mm -hmm. people seem to be more attuned than others. And in our case, like, June and I, when we tested it, disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make yeah. any sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of the things too, because you, I, I know that uh, we don't use the the spirit box. We do, you know, maybe for fun, um, as we're, you know, but not a, at an investigation because we you know we find that it's a little too suggestive sometimes. But saying that, we have got some interesting things off the white noise. Correct. Um, you know, with with interesting things and full sentences and and things like that. Um, what really showed me, especially with the Estes method, was that um, it takes out the, um, I guess you'd say the suggestiveness because when somebody's asking questions and uh, you can't hear what they're asking you, and if all of a sudden you do get you know something come through that uh, you know. You'll know that it's really legit, um, but um, you know sometimes it's just really too suggestive. Like I said, unless we find that they're talking through the white noise and actually communicating that way, instead of manipulating the radio voices to say something, that maybe they are manipulating the sound waves to say something. Um, mm -hmm. Now, it's not saying that you know there's always exceptions to every rule, but. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, when it comes to the white noise aspect of it, we've done investigations where it's just by having white noise playing, we've been getting more interactivity, engagement with the ghost, either from, like, look at Spooked in Seattle, right? When we were in the underground and we had white noise going and we got a shadow figure that walked in front of the camera and blocked the light. Yep. 
that was pretty mm. awesome. And we got that on video. <clears throat> so. That was pretty awesome. But sadly, we cannot call that place spooked in Seattle anymore. We're going to have to get us used to just calling it the 102 Cherry Building. No. Can Since, we call it Cherry Pit? Yeah, we can call it the Cherry Pit. <laughs> <laughs> Since... <laughs> Since Spooch is not there anymore, sadly. We still love the space, but yeah. So it's really sad. Well, um, Mike, what is your uh what's your favorite spot to have ever investigated? Is it the Barkerville or somewhere else? I like Wolf Creek Manor. Okay. Or Wolf Creek Inn in Oregon. That was really neat. We didn't get like Sandra and I went down there and we didn't get much stuff, but the the vibes you get there is kinda of like, oh boy. Like it's an older building. You can just feel that there's something in there. Mm-hmm. Um, we met it. We met a nice team from Oregon down there, and they uh, took us oh. down to Golden, like the yep. down there. They we investigated with them, which was really neat and cool. Um, Wolf Creek is up there. Barkerville is up there. Um, now, has Wolf Creek been on? Um, were they on Ghost Hunters that one time? That they suppose? Or, or I was going to say I, that wasn't the place that. Uh, Grant or Jason got the I like your hat videos. I thought that was like Wolf Creek Inn. That was for so Ghost Hunters, they got that one, yeah. So um, I was thinking that. I was thinking that that was, although I do not believe, I'm sorry, I'm going to say something controversial, but I do not yes, believe <laughs> that that yeah, what was the hell? real. <laughs> I think that that was totally fake. After being so, there, I, I, I'll be on the same page with you. I, I think it's active, but not that active. Well, that's cool. But what I, if I if I won the lotto tomorrow, I would like to rent that place for like a week alone, or like have a team in there and like no staff, no other people. Because when I was there, when we were trying to go to sleep, all you would hear is the buzz all day of people walk, or all night walking up and down with their REM pods and their K twos and. Oh, yeah. I don't think they go, if there are ghosts, they're there probably exhausted. Yeah, it's like, would you guys just <laughs> shut up? Yeah. I'm like, here's a couple Duracells, guys. Just, you know, have fun with yeah. them. <laughs> we'll talk Ooh. tomorrow night, okay? So yeah. <laughs> but, no, I, I, I quite like that because I, I like old buildings. That's that's what the appeal is to me. The older, the better. Um, I so we, we have a comment. We, we have a comment from Bazooka Cho. Mm-hmm. Bazooka Joe yes, is saying, do. "Ask Mike about the barn." The barn. The barn. Oh, the one hundred eight mile barn. Oh. And getting ran go. at <clears throat> by a spirit. What? What? What did he say? And That's getting like ran it. at by a spirit. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. Whoops. Look at that. Forgot about that stuff. Um. So the 108 Mile Ranch is, a, like I said earlier, a roadhouse on your way up to Barkerville and you go want to go get your gold. And um, 108 Mile Ranch has really rich history. It also, look up the uh, serial killer named Agnes McPhee. Oh, Agnes McPhee. Yeah. So she's more folklore because there's not much. A lot of people think she's folklore. A lot of people think she's not. So it's kind of the, the team you want to be on. <laughs> um. For me, like I said, investigator-minded. There's facts on her. There's books written on her. There's stuff on her. If you really dig her up, um, basically, <laughs> what, dig her up the other way, not yeah. dig her up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, Just thought um, I'd make that you know clear. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, lived up there. She owned the roadhouse, 108 Mile Ranch, and um, it is said that she used to. Um, murder the miners coming down from Barkerville and take their gold. Ooh. She would lure them into the roadhouse with prostitutes in which she stole at a young age from surrounding areas and let them work there. Sounds um, plausible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, back in the day, that, that's, that's well, well, what they say happened. It's the, the town, some, some believe it, some don't. So it's, if you want to believe it, you can. I do. And um, so we will start with the post house. So there's a post house there, which used to be the original roadhouse. Um, okay. I'm trying to paint a picture because I know we have listeners. But just Google while we're talking, the 108 Mile Ranch site. And then the post house was, like I said, the original site where Agnes would have lived. She would have 
had the miners come, coming to and from Backerville. That's where the girls would do what they do. And um, that's probably one of the grossest buildings I've ever been in. Oh, no. <laughs> Ross has been in there. I was in there with Ross. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Ross didn't like it. Yeah, that's what he was telling me. David Weatherly didn't like it uh, when they were upstairs. But um, so when, the last time I was there with Sandra, we were hesitating to go in. We didn't want to go in. We were sitting in the vehicle for now before we even went in. And when we got out of the vehicle, we heard, we heard people fighting inside, inside the building. We we're like, huh? I have the wow. keys. No one else has the keys right now. And um, so we go up to the building. Nothing. And then we hear the door rattle. And we're like, oh boy. And then I open the lock. And what does the paranormal guy do? He goes in. And then um, if you go to my our YouTube page, Haunted Crew, you'll see a whole 38-minute video of me. I suggest you watch it because it's really good. I'm cool. not plugging me or anything. If you're into the paranormal, watch it. You go ahead and plug uh, yourself. You're, this is why you're, yeah. <laughs> watch it because I'm yes. <laughs> but, uh, I will watch it, definitely. <laughs> and um, it basically has us going up to the building, has Sandra filming. And it's funny because like we we're talking earlier about the spirit boxes, how, how sometimes they work, maybe they don't, whatever. And I just got that new S box. This is the first time we're going to use it. And as soon as I start, so we, we, we put the portal up, the portal's doing nothing. I, I get impatient if something's not paying off next. And then... Um, I have this S box, and then I look at the camera. I'm like, this. I was about to basically blast it. And all of a sudden, it said my name. I'm like, okay, okay. And then um, I, I keep talking. If you're here, do this, do that. If you look in the video as well, there's, there's a shadow that goes behind me. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And so it says, my, it's the only Sandra and I there. It says, Dave Scott's name. It says, Bazooka Joe's name which is Mark. And um, <laughs> then it says my name again. It says Dave's name another three times. Mean, meanwhile, saying other audible EVPs. I'm on your guys' side of the spirit box. I think it works sometimes probably radio a lot of the time, but it, we are actually getting hits on it. I, I'm confident enough to say we're actually getting hits on it. And... Um, then it, we wanted to go upstairs, but we couldn't. We felt that there was like a demonic, not a real demonic thing, but just something really scary in the corner, um, making it so we couldn't go up the stairs. We even had Bazooka Joe and Dave come down um, when we were done investigating, when Dave was done his show, and sage us and try and investigate in there again, but everything was gone. So we'll fast forward. You guys can still hear me, right? I can see June. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, there we go. A um, couple months later, on the same property is a giant Clydesdale barn, and on this barn, in this barn, um, the Clydesdale so it's huge. So they got a ton of stalls, but recently they had taken some of the stalls out of this building. This building was built late 1900s. Sorry, not late, early 1900s, and. Um, they put a jail in it that doesn't belong in there. So they're wrecking with the chi of the building. Like it's not original now. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we were in there to investigate, they wanted to show us the, uh, the jail. And um, all of a sudden, Dave and I look up and we see something on the, the ceiling of the barn running at us upside down, like rushing us. And oh, boy. What Lord was that? Mm-hmm. It wasn't cool, is what I'll say. So that's the barn story. So it was on that's the a ceiling? Really good story. Yeah, so it was on the <laughs> ceiling rushing at you? Yeah, like, I'm oh not one of those God. guys that would say that. <laughs> oh, I saw something rushing on the ceiling. I saw something rushing on the ceiling. Like crawling, like you see in the movies. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, I have to say, that would kind of make me pause. <laughs> it, it would be a little unnerving, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like those are the last two investigations I have. I've, ha- I've had there um, was the post house, which was probably one of the most. I don't know what the word is to use, but evidence rich investigations okay. I've ever experienced. Like I love, I love. It's all done in one take too. Like we weren't even filming; we were filming because lots of stuff was happening, and it's just one, just one take. 
of everything. We don't turn the camera off. It's just recording for like 38 minutes. And then we had to leave because we were scared. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. So do just, that. Where's the post house located so I can drop a link in the 108 Mile Ranch? Okay. That's what it's called. Mile Ranch. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, when we were driving up there, we kept saying 108 miles something. And I was like, well, that's surely not the name of the place, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think they'd be a little more uh... <laughs> original. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I guess it had to mark it, you know, because <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm sure it wasn't as well uh, traveled back then <laughs> so they, that's how probably how they marked it so, but i was like that's not the name of it is it <laughs> but yeah that's pretty awesome yeah that's yeah uh, oh go ahead no i was just gonna say you do get into a lot of amazing historical sites mm -hmm. and and i just i like to keep them alive like it's not for me it's for them obviously i get the perk of investigating them but oh, yeah. at the end of the day, it's, it's nice to see what I love doing with these investigations where we have public come in. You get that one guy. He's like, this is a crockish, you know. And uh -huh. I'm like, okay, that's cool, bro. <clears throat> and um, once the investigation's over, and he'll come up to you. He'll be like, I don't believe this, but there was this one time. I'm like, of course there was this yeah. one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't believe this, really. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, if if they're, you know, the biggest skeptic in the world, they're going to make all sorts of, I mean, yeah, they're, they're going to make excuses for what it really could be, even if, like, you know, a ghost came and tap danced right in front of them and be like, well, I'm sure that was just, a, <laughs> you know, the sun. <laughs> yeah. <don't> <laughs> but Bazooka Joe and Dave Scott, they do a, a month now because of COVID, but they do a once a month uh charity ghost hunt every month and like from when there's no snow till there's snow that's awesome and it's awesome and they, they've done a lot for that place it's, it's awesome well i can't wait yeah. to see it so where online can you go once the covid's done to can, do you just go to the 108 mile ranch website to book the tour or do you have to book uh they have a facebook ghost link okay. uh, it's 108 mile ghost tours okay i'll go find that and post it awesome Thank you, Jake. No problem. You know, I, I, I changing the subject for a second. I was just going to say I, um, I had seen on your your website a little while ago that uh, you had uh, posted a picture with you and Kenny Rogers, and I know that Kenny Rogers had just passed away. Um, so can you tell us about that? How did you get to meet him? Oh, Kenny Rogers. So when I, um, when I first, I, I had two full-time jobs for a good almost two years. I worked at, the, at a casino doing security for my well, casinos up here. And um, by day and by night, I worked as an SBA <coughs> officer uh, responding to only emergency calls. And um, so daytime, I, my job was usually guarding the stars that came through. Uh, or working the lounges or the concert hall area. Oh, cool! And I, I, I met a lot of really cool people, um, Blondie, all tons of people. Oh, wow! Um, but Kenny Rogers, he was cool. He, you could tell he was in a lot of pain back way back when I met him, and like a big back brace on. His manager said, "Don't touch him, don't hug him, don't do whatever." Oh. Um, he's a really nice guy. That, that's my memory of him. I don't remember much else, but. I remember being down like in the dressing room area before he came out. He was very pleasant, asked me how I am, blah, blah, blah. That's really was, nice. Like his energy, <clears throat> he's like the OG of country that was still alive, right? Now what, you have Willie Nelson left? Yep. So. Just about. They're all, they're all disappearing. Yeah. It's like every you time still I- still have Dolly. Yes, I know. But it's like every time I go on Facebook and I just see a picture of them, my heart just skips. No, what? And then it's less, like with Betty White. I know she's got to go some, when, you know, I know she's going to have to go sometime soon. We're but... going to pump her full of formaldehyde <laughs> and keep her like together as long as possible. We're going to like so. Frankenstein her. She has a heart. Zap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it is funny. Every time ever someone posts a picture like Betty White still alive. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, whoo! I'm still here, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you know when she goes, they're gonna be like, "Yeah, right, fake news." 
Yeah, nobody's mm-hmm. gonna believe it. It'll well, be I a think conspiracy. There was, I think there was something like five or six years ago that uh, that she had died, and then she, she had uh, made a video. Nope, still here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, One of the guys that I'm nervous to see pop up on our feed is Jerry Lewis. He's like the old, the last '50s guy. Yep. It is. He's like it's... one of my favorite singers of all time. So, what do you think about what's his name that does the um, the ghost or the the sessions? They got in a lot of trouble for faking. Um, so as soon as a celebrity dies, he gets the not the ghost. Oh, body, Steve Huff. Steve Huff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, what do you feel about people like that? <laughs> I mean, you know, not my monkey, not my circus. <laughs> hmm. Um. I don't know. I, I don't agree with faking evidence. I don't agree with embellishing evidence. I only agree with facts. I think it paints a picture for all of us that we're weirdos, that we're faking. Yeah. Because like you, you look a lot of all these the EVPs I sent you guys. Those are pretty damn good EVPs and they're all legit. I don't need to fake evidence to have evidence. And I know you guys don't either. Uh-uh. It's that you need to put the time in. You don't just get get this computer in your apartment and put some voices in from a few songs and then call it a day. Right. Yeah. But I don't know. I, that, that's my opinion on that. I'm, I'm very black and white with evidence. Like I, there's so many places I'll go to be like, hmm, there's nothing. What do you mean? There's nothing. I can feel there's a demon in here. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> We've had that trouble with our group sometimes. Um, another group have, has investigated their place. And of course they found all these demons and they've, you know, gotten all these psychic impressions of all these, you know, ghosts that are walking around, which, you know, in some places we know there's some activity there because um, we had this one place that we investigated where the person had our, the people living downstairs had called the police because they kept hearing people walk up there things moving around furniture moving um and nobody was up there it was like you know a place where the owners would come and just relax like every once in a while so um they called the police because they thought there was an intruder up there and they had i think about seven different renters downstairs and all seven of them had called the police not knowing about any of the activity that there was somebody walking and um you know doing stuff upstairs so we knew that there was activity up there um but like i said the group that came in before us was telling there's evil entities up there and you know you need to sell the property and oh my god so of course when we get in there you know and we didn't get anything at all um it made us look like we you know you guys must not have been trying (laughs) it's just like what but like i find real ghost hunting real ghost hunting is boring it's a lot of hours of doing of talking to the air you know you're yep. afraid to do that <clears throat> to the air. oh yes but you a lot of people a lot of patience yeah yeah and a lot of people think it's like paranormal joe exotic where you have all of these <laughs> ghosts at your disposal at all times i had to bring that in somehow <laughs> the paranormal <laughs> joe exotic oh my god <laughs> Oh, I'm just having these pictures of like wrangling ghosts. And- Let me see yeah. if someone's already claimed that one set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lost his Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> he could pull it off pretty well. But but that's what I mean. Like a lot of people think you're going in there with your proton pack and all that stuff, and you're you're there to like and bricks and boards being thrown at your head. Yep. Won't um, they come- any- but then when people <laughs> see like the gear we use, they're like that. They'll be, a lot of times they'll be like, "That's it." I'm like, yeah. But again, talking about the old school methods, I'll say it. I might get blasted for it. I don't care. You go right ahead. I use a Ouija board. However, my debate with that, what is, tell me the difference between a Ouija board and a spirit box. Yeah, there isn't any. No, one's modern, one's not. Right. One's made of cardboard, the other is more mechanical. Uh Batteries. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's what I mean. I, I, I like to bring as many tools to investigations as I can to rule something out or to confirm something. Like one of the last EVPs I got is probably one of the most creepiest EVPs I've ever heard. Um, it's called Cherokee. You should play that one for your, your audience. Oh. 
He's there. He is. You're I muted. was muted. Which, which <laughs> EVP do you want me to? Ch which one? <laughs> Cherokee. We were laughing at you. Cherokee. That's okay, because I was like multitasking. You know, I'm not good at that. Uh, I. That one's not in the list here. No. You said Cherokee, well, we can right? Grab it, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Drop it, and I will upload it. <laughs> Let's see what if I can up? multitask. What's up with spaced out radio? Says it's Merle now, Bazooka Merle. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, where was I going with that? So Dave likes to call me by my middle name. That's okay. my show name, Dave, and it's Merle. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't get any more redneck than Merle. <laughs> it's a lot like Earl. <clears throat> with an and he had to die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. According to the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about Earl. <laughs> oh. Jake, it's called Unknown Response. Unknown Response. One yeah, second. Talk amongst yourselves. We can't have dead air. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we're just waiting. <laughs> la la la. <laughs> um. So. Keep talking Mike, amongst yourself. I'm looking yeah, for it. Okay. I was out in the yard with the dogs earlier today, and it, it was kind of hot, but we were out there playing and stuff, letting them get some air. And uh, some guy in a looked like a. He might have been an animal control officer, but he was off duty. Um, because he was just in a regular vehicle, but he he stops in the middle of the road and then he backs up to us, and you know he starts asking about the dogs and I don't know it made me think okay either it's just some guy out there who's who loves the dogs and and I've we've attracted um, audiences before but uh, I just hope they weren't casing the place to see what dogs they'd like to you know run off with. What was he in? Pardon? What was he in? He was in a uh, Jeep Cherokee, I think. What was it called, though? Oh, Animal Control, maybe. Oh, I was trying to get you to say vehicle again. Oh. Vehicle. Jeep Cherokee? Oh, vehicle. <laughs> Is that how we... Are we saying ve vehicle funny? Vehicle. We say ve vehicle. 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 Yeah, how do we say that? Now I'm going to be conscious. Vehicle. Vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I'm making fun of the South, I say vehicle. There you vehicle, go. But I yeah. usually say vehicle. vehicle. I like you drop the H. Vehicle. No, yeah. I say vehicle. But we could go We're vehicle. Because, you know, vehicle. Vehicle. Good. <laughs> we, Wendy and I are from Missouri, so that might be the, a Missouri thing. Mm -hmm. Vehicle. Wendy, were your dogs um, on the road? No, no, no. We were in our yard. No. Um, yeah. I know, like with my black shepherd, a lot of law, a lot of law enforcement would compliment him because he looks like a cop. Um, could be that too. Mm hmm. You know, sure, and you know, I've always been approached at like different uh, charity events and things with with old Augie with me because he's he's half as tall again as I am. So, um, and you know, everybody's oh, can we pet him? Can we do this? The little kids go running right up to him, and I'm like, okay. You can get away with that with this dog, but not the other one. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, you're just as likely to get your face taken off if you, yeah. you know, give the dog a bum rush. But um, you know, and I've been invited to the German Shepherd Club of Kansas City and and that type of thing. And I'm like, but he's a rescue, you know. <laughs> I don't have any papers. Funny story about that. Off topic of the paranormal. So that's okay. Sorry, uh, mm -hmm. it's all about uh, it, you. This, this is a good one. Um, mm -hmm. What, my old dog, I don't have her anymore. Um, she's a Czech Shepherd. She's a, so way back when I seized the parents to the dog, the dog gave birth in the shelter. The dog, the parents were both from the Czech Republic. Ooh, so they were okay. all favored. And then mm -hmm. I want, she had a really high prey drive and reaction drive. So I wanted to put her in Schutzen. They wouldn't mm -hmm. let me put her in Schutzen because I couldn't supply her papers. I'm still bitter to this day. Oh my! Snobbies. She was what a is that? Born in the show. Born in the show. Buttheads. Yeah. Elitists. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that? Is that a special? It's the the canine training, basically. Oh. Training, training him like a police dog. Mm -hmm. Oh man! Yeah. So yeah, they had to. 
That doesn't make any sense. Oh, that makes that cartoon makes a little more sense too. That they since that I was watching a cartoon about a dog that uh, you know wanted to go through through police training and they would not let him because he did not have his papers. <laughs> but he proved them all wrong when he saved a family in a fire. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Sorry, was checking that message. My apologies. So this clip that Jake's finding, so this last I just found it. I just found it. That, that Jake found um, was from an investigation we did way out in the boonies of Vancouver, um, like getting towards the mountain, the mountains. And um, the the I gotta be as vague as possible because of our complaint or complainant. So that's a work term because of our client. Um, she has spirits following her from location to location she goes to. The house she was at, um, there's a spirit outside that kept trying to come in her house. True, true story. It was so bad, you would see that all of her doors would be um, jimmied with something to keep the doors closed. When you go in there. It was like right out of a movie with that part. Oh, wow. And um, so her house borders along a highway. And it's where an old R on ramp was in the 60s and 70s. And I know that a car full of a family went off that on ramp, flipped over, and they all died way back then. Oh, no. True story. And um, so she believes that they also haunt the house because she's seen full figures walking down her hallways, up her stairs, down to where her tenants are, sees them outside, hears voices. And um, so this is from my audio record. This is from a, a Zoom. And um, it's probably one of the creepiest sounds I've ever got. Ooh. Okay. Well, then let me play it. It's a 12 second clip. I'll play it uh, three times. Okay. Here we go. Can you tell us who you are? What's your name? Play it again. It comes at about the nine second mark on this 12 second clip. Can you tell us who you are? What's your name? And one more time. Can you tell us who you are? What's your name? Okay, back to you, Mike. So that is a voice, in my opinion, saying the word Cherokee in a really creepy sound. Um, so what, remember earlier when we were talking about the spirit box and how it, it gets radio and whatnot? We were using an SB7, but I modified it. Not with this clip. This was just clear audio. Um, but later, we were using an SB7. I take, I've taken the antenna out and the radio so all you get is white it's just white noise it's a white noise box essentially and um because as soon as i hear radio i'm like whoa and turn it off yeah but anyhow, <laughs> it doesn't do that anymore and when our client was talking with our spirit box because we use it at the end for for fun or whatever right and it would mimic her i wish i could play you those clips but it's more private but um, the spirit box would literally mimic her voice and say different words. Oh, wow. So that made me like read, be like, oh, maybe this thing's on to something. Uh -huh. But yeah. And then, so that was the first investigation we did when just the two of us went there, Sandra and I. Then a month later, we went with our entire team. There were four of us there. And our investigator, Blair, got the word Cherokee on her recorder. Wow. So, not as creepy sound. To tell you something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what it was. But... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, were they there on the land or, you know? Yeah. Um, the one outside was an, an overly friendly person, allegedly. But yeah, I'm wondering, I just, I wonder where sounds or voices like that come from. And that's what makes me keep doing what we do, right? Right. Exactly. So have you ever been like really 
I mean, I know you, you were talked about being scared at that one investigation, but any other investigations where you were really like terrified where you were just like, ah, no, forget it. Not anymore. I'm trying to think of one. The last time I had this scare feeling um, was, remember when I was telling you how we heard the people yelling and shoving from inside the post house right? and the door rattled before we went in and no one was in there. Um, the whole leading up to that investigation, you know, when you feel like you're doing something wrong, illegal, bad, something ill can happen. That's how we both felt. Oh, wow. Um, when we were in there, I just wanted to leave. But I've trained myself, we all have, to stop running. You don't need to run. Mm-hmm. Just do your thing. Yeah. Um, but when I saw the figure in my head of what was in the corner, I can still see in my head, and it makes me go, oh, and like look around. Um, it looked like a giant burned guy with red eyes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that kind of creeped me out. Mm-hmm. That'd be a little creepy. Um, but I also have things follow me a lot home. Oh. I protect myself. I sage. I cleanse. I cleanse my house. I do all. I meditate. Not as much as I used to, but I... <clears throat> um, so why do you think that they follow you home? I mean... I think my investigative tact might be a little aggressive sometimes because I'm really, I'm hardwired from work to obtain information. Oh, right. That's true. And sometimes work mic comes out and when I'm investigating and I know Dave Scott, he's on me like flies on crap about stop being like that. But that's how I do it. And that's how I get my results. Like, I'm never disrespectful. I, I do push the boundaries, but I'm never, ever disrespectful. That's important, yeah. Um, so I think sometimes I get followed because of that. Um, sometimes I let my guard down a little bit in the love of the investigation to get more evidence. People call me stupid for doing that, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> um, in, in, in a nice way. Well, like, I, I, I take care of myself. Like, I, I do believe in crystals and stones, but that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had lots of conversations with Ross about that, and <laughs> and um, but also haunted objects. I'm like Ross. I'm really attracted to them. One of the um, one of the creepiest. I, I got two haunted object stories for you. I used to collect World War memorabilia. Keyword here is used to, and I had a game used bayonet from World War Two. It was a British one used used and um i bought it i had felt wrong buying it brought it home i felt wrong being home and then that very night i smelled like rotting flesh and i saw a soldier standing beside my bed oh wow in sierra <clears throat> and i'm like nope so i got rid of that um a current object i have which i think it still has energy of someone in it is a uh, used Canadians used a Lee Enfield rifle in World War II and the Korean War. I have a used Lee Enfield that was used in World War II. Oh, wow. Well used in World War II. Um, it has notches on it. I found those after after Still I bought notches. it. I, I'm not weird of looking for items like that. Um, and then I have this gun, and I'm like, oh, I don't feel right with this gun. It's just, but to me, I'm a collector. And my like, yeah, it's just a gun. It's just a gun. I couldn't keep it in my bedroom. I, my my like my gun safe. You wouldn't be able to find my gun safe in my house, right? Because I'm really responsible with that stuff. But um, I, I kept it in a gun case in a different room. I'm like, no. <laughs> and then a psychic medium I know he came over and he's like, "What is in here?" I'm like, "Why don't you find it?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um. So he did. He found it. He he did some psychic medium stuff to it. And he's like, it's okay for now, but what you need to do is go fire some rounds into it. Just hammer bullets through it at the gun range. A couple of boxes. I'm like, why? He's like, got to make it yours. You got to get all that energy out of it. And that's what I did. I got scared to first... I'm not scared to fire guns, but this one I was scared to pull the trigger for the first time. And I did what he said. It's it's in my gun safe in my room now. Like, wow! Yeah. Give off any 
vibes now or is it just oh god no it's just it's just a cool. yeah so well what other evps did you um do we have we played all of them or is there oh, a few no, yeah, left? Lots more. Um, yes. this is the langham court theater we were talking about earlier with the horse stable mortuary and now it's a theater if you look for the evps um we'll do one at a time um fire them all stage left I found that one right away. And it's 11 seconds. I'll play it three times. Stage lights. So it sounds like it's broken up into two parts. The first one comes about four seconds and the last one comes about nine seconds. Stage lights. And one last time. Stage lights. Okay, back to you, Mike. So, again, this was, we had access to this year all by ourselves, our team. And this was just two investigators out on the stage. And um, one of the claims to the theater was there was a man in the, in where the seats are in the audience and we're thinking that was him because sometimes they say he was cranky if people were there. Um, a lot of people didn't like the theater being there back in the day. Um, that was just, that was a lucky capture. And then the, there's another one on there called No Costume Room. It's no, it's the word no in the EVP and it says costume room. Um, it's a funny story about this. I'll set it up. So up in the costume room in this theater, they have like dozens and dozens of uniforms from World War One, Two, Korean One, Vietnam. They have American ones, Canadian ones, sailor one, like from Army, Navy, everything. And um, we were doing an EDP session by all of, all of the uniforms. They, they were all, I guess, surplus ones. But that's where this clip came in. Okay, this is a longer one. It's about 30 seconds here, so I'll play it twice. Yes, that's my hand doing that. Oh. It puts it back on focus. Yes, there is a male spirit up here with us right it's now. still blurry. And I'm freezing. Our is battery was at 60 minutes left, and now it's at 28. Is that male spirit here with us? It's blurry. Does it mean us harm? So the EVB comes at about 20 to 24 seconds. Yes, that's my hand doing that. Oh. It puts it back on focus. Yes, there is a male spirit up here with us right it's still now. blurry. And I'm freezing. Our is battery was at 60 minutes left, and now it's at 28. Is that male spirit here with us? It's blurry. Okay, back to you, Mike. Does it mean the last harm? one we have is called Find Me. This is stuff from the Langham Court Theater. Um, it comes from the same audio clip for the, from the first one, the Fire Them All. Um, this is probably one of the clearest clips we actually caught from there. I would consider it a class A. Okay, I'll play this one three times. It's eight seconds long. Uh, they say that there's somebody that I have seen in the Big person. And that one comes at about the five second mark. Here it is again. And one last time. Okay, back to you, Mike. So the last, yeah, we'll do two more clips. Um, this is from a, a residential investigation we did in 2019. Um, so the background story on this, the downstairs tenant of this two-story house that we went to used to be allegedly, use the word allegedly, into witchcraft. Um, what's the other word? Sacrificial stuff. 
Um, Satanism, or maybe... Yeah, there you go. Perfect word. Okay. <laughs> and um, they had a falling out with the people upstairs. So this guy said, um, well, I'm going to hex you guys. And he basically, when, when you hex someone with Satanism, you write it on a piece of paper and you hide it all over their house and stuff like that. I'm not overly educated with that, but that's what they said he did. Yeah. Um, the people upstairs observed him sacrificing mice, rats, birds, burying them all over the yard their bones up and stuff weird stuff and um i had a really gross like the vibe in there wasn't great especially downstairs um these two clips were just from evp sessions um when we played these two clips for the the clients they went white as ghosts because it confirmed that they have stuff in their house um, we went to this house three times and we still can't get rid of whatever's in there. They wanted it gone. They they want it dealt with. Um, can't get rid of everything. So we, we've given them tools on what they can do and who they can reach out to. Um, usually they'll quiet down, but the, these guys, the spirits in this house, haven't quieted down. So the first clip is Beware in a Deep Voice. Okay. And it's a nine second clip. I'll play it three times. Here we go. <clears throat> and that one comes right about in the middle. And one last time. Okay, back to you, Mike. And the last one is um, I'm here. And this one is a 21 second clip. Here we go. If you guys want to have a chat, I'd love to hear from you. And I'll play it again. That it comes at about the 17 second mark. If you guys want to have a chat, I'd love to hear from you. And one last time. Okay, back to you, Mike. I actually have one more I sent you. So it's called Then Leave. Yes, this is actually my favorite one. <laughs> so this clip, um, this is from a metaphysical store in uh, the city I live in. We went and investigated there one night. Um, they, it's a pretty busy store. They run card readings, psychics, mediums, healers, gypsies, witchcraft, everything under this one store. Um, it's for all your metaphysical needs. Um, probably one of the best stores I've ever been in, and I've been in a lot of them, um, for purchasing things like stones, everything, everything of that realm, of the metaphysical realm. Um, we didn't feel welcomed. Once the, our clients, the owners left, it's like, we're not supposed to be here. Um, they have an altar in the back of their, of their, uh, store. And um, you went near it, you get cranky, you turn on your, we turn on each other. It was the weirdest sensation. Oh, ever. wow. <laughs> yeah. So we stayed away from that stuff. Yeah. Well, we did EVP sessions near it. But this is what came, came of that investigation. This is one of the good clips we got. Okay. I'll play this one three times as well. It's 15 seconds long. Job. 
And one more time. And it sounds like it comes at about the 12 second mark. Here it is one more time. Try what? Come for me. No. Okay, back to you, Mike. And that, that's all I have for clips for you. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, those are some of the good ones we, we found today. Um, have lots and lots and lots of them. And just wanted to say that uh, Wendy and I could not hear them, so that's why we're not reacting to them. If you think we're, you know, cold and right, dead inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, just wanted to them say, earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> so that just wanted to let everybody know that you know that's mm -hmm. why we're not going. Mm -hmm. oh. We're still here, and <laughs> yes. Now my yeah. dog is snoring behind. Yes, me. I was like, <laughs> I was hearing the snoring in the background. I was like, somebody, I think that's Keith. That's Dakota. not Mikey <laughs> snoring. Mikey is not no. snoring. It was Dakota. <laughs> but uh, Mike, if it's if it's okay, I can uh, take these EVPs and make them a gallery, an audio gallery on the Mystic Moon website. If it's okay, sure. yeah. Well, we're getting down to the last 10 minutes now. Um, I was going to say, Mike, do you want to um, share how people can get a hold of you and if they want an investigation and, and uh, you know, everything me, like that? You can find me on Facebook, Michael Merle. Um, Haunted Crew of Canada group page. Haunted Crew of Canada on Instagram. Um, Instagram, usually we're fairly active. Uh, Facebook, which I obviously check daily. Um, our website's hauntedcrewcanada.com. Um, that's how you can get investigations. We take any case that comes our way. We're not case snobs. We'll take anything given to us. <laughs> um, yeah, that's where you can find us. You can reach us. And I'm hoping to come. I was really sad about the Golden Ghost Conference. I know. We had so Before. many plans that weekend. Then we were after that, we we're going to mm -hmm. go investigate the USS Turner Joy in Bremerton. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was just yeah. the whole weekend of too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to do it again yeah. next year. Next year. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you, you can um, do you get Canadian listeners on your show? Some, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have people in Edmonton that take cases too. So that's a province over, Alberta. Um, they take cases too. So we're based out of the lower mainland and yeah. Awesome. Well, we're so, uh, oh, we you know, um, we still have, you know, some time left, everything. Um, can you share any like funny stories of any of your investigations or something funny? We'll get end on a funny note, maybe. Sure, this is, this is a good one because I am the butt of the joke. Oh, really? <laughs> That's always a good one. So, this goes, so we're, we're going back up to Barkerville, but we're stopping before we go to Barkerville. We're um, investigating a place called Cottonwood Ranch Roadhouse. And so Cottonwood Ranch Roadhouse, Barkerville's altitude like this, Cottonwood's down here. Nothing grows in Barkerville because it's too cold. So all of the farming needs, you know, all your your farms would um, grow there and they'd bring it up to Berkeley. Anyhow, we were investigating one of the, the rooms where the miners would rent and it's a museum, okay? So you, everything looks real, but you're gonna learn. I'm gonna learn they're not real. So I'm getting tired, it's probably two in the morning. I got a good video of this too. And um, I go to sit on a bed and I go right through it because there's no mattress, it's just a blanket. But but the best part of this is if, if I saw somebody fell, I'd be like, here, I'll help you. But no, the guys I was with, they were like, how's the camera? Is it still rolling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, did we get video of that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get video. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have to say the same thing happened to me. <laughs> when we were in Centralia, the shady lady. A brothel. <laughs> the brothel, the brothel. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that there weren't, wasn't anything underneath the bed to like keep the mattress up. And I sat on the corner, of course, and 
Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I hit like a ton of bricks. I, I was literally putting all my weight down, assuming it was a mattress. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> worse because there it was nothing. It was just a blanket. Yeah, that's that's bad. And I remember just hearing myself instinctively be like, okay, don't help me. <laughs> like being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, just yeah. make sure we film it. <laughs> also. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, uh, we all I was gonna say we also forgot to mention the um museum um up there with the with the with the little haunted doll. Andy the doll. Yes. Yes. We forgot to mention that. That was pretty cool because you had an experience with her too. I did. What? 2015. 2016. Yeah. 2015. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm evidence-based. And what, what are the tales of the dolls? It can put you in a trance and stuff like that. So one of our investigators, he was just staring at the doll for a long time. Then he goes outside, has a smoke and pukes. And he says, thinks the doll did it. So I'm like, whatever, I'll call the doll out. So I stare at it. Then I go outside. I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm hungry. You need some snacks before we start our investigation. And then I don't like telling the story because it sounds so weird, but it, it's true. It can happen. Um, I go, I guess, I guess, because I don't remember. I go into a trance and I start walking towards the highway to walk onto the highway. Uh -oh. Our investigators, yeah, our investigators saw me and they're like, oh, shoot. And they come get me, and I come to, and I'm like, what, am I, what are you doing? I'm just getting peanuts. I'm like, they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, the highway, so. Mandy the doll, that's creepy. That, that, that's, that's my outcome of that one. Um, when we investigated there, we didn't get much, much data, much evidence. Just um, personal experiences. Just almost you getting flattened by traffic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Drama. <laughs> oh yeah well glad you're okay from her <laughs> but uh but yeah also in that area is the first time i ever saw a grizzly bear in the wild walking in a field not too far from there that was pretty awesome oh wow <laughs> well, well you weren't oh you weren't there jeff was uh, jeff was there i think yeah and he was coming he was the other way we saw this truck stopped in the middle of the road and was like why are they stopped and we saw him looking and found out it was jeff looking over there and i looked over there and there was a grizzly bear in the field there it was like oh my god that was so <laughs> awesome. i've never seen like you know it was a long way away you know you know but uh, it was pretty amazing but yeah well thank you again mike it was an right. awesome yes. show i love that thank time you. flew by as it, yeah. as it does <laughs> Yeah, no, I enjoyed that. It was fun. I like, I had I like so it. much evidence. Evidence. Yeah. Evidence, evidence, <laughs> evidence. Yeah, for once you get to be interviewed, since you usually do the interviewing. Yes. <laughs> but, no, it's good. Oh, we have four minutes still. I have yes. one more. I have one more story. Remember, oh, sure. I was going to tell you. Hey, you take your time. We can yeah. handle it. Yeah, as we can. I, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we when got I, plenty of time. Remember, I was going to tell you like my. Uh, my uh, animal control story or like oh yeah mm -hmm. my sheltering story so when i first started in, in the business i worked the graveyard shift it was a horrible shift because you could do all the bad things all it's when the police call you non-stop wow and you had to go deal with all like gross things um mm -hmm. so i went to one of the the spca they had at that time multiple shelters all over each little city in the lower mainland i went to one I'm not going to say which one, but um, so that if you go into the parking lot, there's the main animal shelter, and then behind it's an outbuilding where they the deceased animals would be. Mm -hmm. And there's always a joke that um, one of the old employees from the 70s haunted the place. I'm like, yeah, whatever. No, he doesn't. And then um, when I backed my vehicle up to go unload something, I see a man go from the main shelter to the outbuilding in an old 1970s style smock. That was a smock the shelter staff would wear. Plain as day. And I had locked the gate. So there's nobody else in there. And I'm like, oh God. So I take my baton out. I'm like, no one's going to get me. Right. <laughs> and I go look everywhere and there's no one, no one was there. Because when he was walking towards the building, he looked at me and kept going. Wow. Yeah. So I never liked going that night after that. <laughs> I bet so. That's pretty creepy. <laughs> I wonder if you appeared as a ghost to him. 
and that's why you got the thousand yard stare and <laughs> and then he just kept moving I interrupted something mm-hmm. <laughs> or he's thinking who's this punk kid watching me uh-huh. <laughs> Absolutely. A punk kid then. I'll, I'll own that <laughs> but, yeah cool so awesome so jake or wendy would you like to tell who's going to be on the next show i'll let jake do that since he worked so hard <laughs> mm-hmm. to bring the guest in Actually, I sent one email. And I got, well, and you know. Back to me right away. <laughs> so I didn't have to twist, you know, I didn't have to pull the connections here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but next week's guest will be Nick Redfern. And we'll be talking about his new book, uh, Monsters of the Deep, plus mm. some more of his monster books. That you, you, you know, when you're talking to Nick, usually you get the conspiracy theories and the aliens. And mm. But mm. next week is all about creepy critters. Yes. Ooh, monsters, yay! Because yeah. I love <laughs> me a Kraken, let me tell you. I love yes, he a Kraken. does. He <laughs> loves a Kraken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do. He's a Kraken head. <laughs> I'm a crackhead. Hey, that might be our hockey team. <laughs> crackhead. Good. It's I good. will be a crackhead. I will be at the crack house. <laughs> All that good stuff. Oh, Give awesome. me some squid. I'm down. It's funny, Vancouver's already competitive about your non non team yet. We're already like we're gonna kill them. We're gonna kill them. <laughs> well, it's an expansion team, so. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, you know, the Canucks could use some wins. <gasps> Oh, did They're you say that? <laughs> <laughs> they are the next Chicago Blackhawks. Look at their young talent. Well, interestingly enough, I'm from Chicago. <laughs> so, you know, we had we had a nice little run there. <laughs> That's be us next year or two. Yeah. Well, awesome. So we keep saying. <laughs> <laughs> There's always next year. Yes. <laughs> but remember, yes, it was like the Cubs. There's always next year. And then there was yeah. a next year. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> I even knew that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Well, thank you again, Mike. And My pleasure. Thank you, Wendy and Jake, as usual, for being amazing. All right. And, and Wendy, do you have any parting words? Not particularly. Okay. Does <laughs> Dakota listening and chilling and Dakota have any pouring or par- parting snores? <laughs> 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 nope. He's, he's, he's gone. hasn't even come down today. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh. All right, okay. everybody. Well then, um, be safe our, and yeah. healthy. Wash your damn hands. Sneeze into yes. your elbow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stay home. Don't go around your grandparents. No, please don't. Mm-hmm. No matter how much you miss them, I know. Mm-hmm. I miss my friends a lot. I know. <laughs> It's killing me. <laughs> my team. My paranormal team. Yes. Not being able to investigate. It's really killing me. I'm going to be watching. ghosters. I I'm going to be watching ghosters. all of the Haunted Cruise, uh, you know, videos just yeah. to get the fix. Mm-hmm. The Post House <laughs> one's really good. The po- like, we only have like four or five up, but the Post House one is really, it's genuine. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's I dropped, I'm- yeah, I dropped links to your videos in the, Yay. in our chat. But, yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right, everyone. So have with a that, safe week. yes, everyone be safe. Have a good week. And I have some aggressive rock to take us out. Awesome. Excellent. I usually do aggressive rock. Thanks, Bazooka Joe. We thanks, try. Bazooka Joe. <laughs> uh, thanks, Spaced Out Radio. Thanks, Spaced Out Radio. And with that, everyone have a good night. Bye. 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 Okay, we're muted.